So this is the first time I've brought my beautiful red on a wedding. I'm shooting on the 1DX Mark II and the red weapon. I have a 12 millimeter setup on the red and it's 24 to 70 on my 1DX Mark II. That way I have a camera that's already set up to get really wide shots and then I have my main camera for everything else. So Nate here is gonna be hauling this around while I'm shooting on the opposite camera. So you guys will notice I'm always looking for foreground to glide up against. Nice pretty tree here. So Nate asked, what do you do when your arms get tired? And I said, my arms don't get tired. Just kidding. But in all seriousness, when I get tired, tuck the elbow right in the side like that. It takes all the pressure off. Or wear a belt, put the glide cam on the belt like that. Go handheld for a minute, take a break. Resting glide cam tips for you. So every time I find a spot I like, I'll get like five or six variations of the same shot just so I have options in the editing room. Get out of here, Zamboni. All right, here we go, parallaxing. Give us a nice parallax using this tree. Gonna do a tilt up now. come out you can shoot all the photos you want on the grounds yeah but professional photography is not allowed anywhere else on property he just says that because it looks like my camera's nice and action chase really cheese this one up baby you're so in love man no look at each other look at each other smiling all right go for it baby oh yeah keep going Keep going. Oh yeah, good baby. All right, good job. Okay, now look at each other. Give me a kiss right there. Okay, good. So I'm shooting everything at a 2.8. I'm switching my shutter speed between like 500 and 1,000 depending on the lighting. And that's pretty much all I'm doing. My white balance is set at 6,000. It's a super cloudy day, so everything's super diffused. Really pretty, even lighting. Talked about this before, but shooting weddings, it's uh, nice to either have the, the sun low in the sky or just to have a complete overcast like this. Stay there. So I got my 12 millimeter on so I can get as much of this temple in the shot as I can. Waiting for these people to clear. We're gonna do a tilt up while parallaxing at the same time. Action. And coming back. See, I'm looking back and forth between my feet and the water. Before every wedding, before we get the bride and groom out here, I come an hour early. And I just shoot a few establishing shots, just kind of walk around the grounds. I'm thinking, that looks pretty. So we'll grab it. Are right, you guys ready? On the count of three, everyone's going to give me a nice silent cheer and you guys go for the kiss. One, hold on, not yet. One, two, three, kiss. Very nice. it's raining I like to pull out my lens hood because um, that allows me to kind of block the incoming rain from reaching the lens here. This lens hood has saved my life. Those would normally be on my lens and they are on my hood. So I'm switching back and forth between 24 and 70 the whole time. It takes like five seconds to change the balance in between them but I'm trying to get as many wide 
and tight shots as I can. So I'm just trying to mix up. One of you guys asked me what tips I have for filming weddings. And one of my biggest tips is film as much footage as you can. Just get a ton of footage because the more you have to work with, uh, the more creativity you have in posts and shots to work with. So, so we're gonna stage a shot. Nate behind the camera here is gonna shake some uh, flower leaf things to create some falling beautiful artifacts. So we'll see if it works. Action. <laughs> okay, we're good. My goal with these weddings is to be invisible. I don't want people to notice I'm here. I'm just a fly on the wall, documenting and capturing the day as it was. Every once in a while I'll direct them and tell them to do something, but I just need one shot with a nice sun flare, guys. That's good, right there. Just right here in the middle. Action. In slow motion tonight. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of receptions. Hey man. Yeah, let's go. Oh, sorry. It's all in the squat, baby. I am the human slider. So I'm gonna get some detail shots now, but I'm gonna go bust out my 85 mil so I can go down to 1.4, get a super shallow depth of field that's even tighter than my 70, it's gonna be killer. Nate asked me an awesome question earlier. He said, what do you do to get more creative shots? Because I've done a ton of weddings and it gets kind of monotonous and how do you, you know, change up your shots to, to improve on each video? I worked on a project in Iceland with Chris Burkhard, who's a famous uh, Instagrammer, has like two and a half million followers on Instagram. I was one of his subjects on one of his photos and I was standing on top of a mountain and literally I was up there for two hours while he took a hundred photos, changed the angle, hundred photos, ran down the mountain, got a different angle, ran over to this mountain, got that angle, waited for the sun to pop behind this, waited for the sun to go over here, went over there. Literally two hours, probably 400 photos later, and he posted one Instagram. My point is, and I told you earlier in this video, shoot as much footage as you can. You see something you like, shoot it from this angle. Try this angle, try this movement, try that movement. And as you try new things, trial and error, you start teaching yourself new things. And you see something that happens by accident, and you're like, oh, that was actually pretty cool. And then you intentionally do it next time. And then when you put the edit together, it looks amazing because you're only using the top five. Are you guys ready? We're getting the final shot. I lied, we're not actually done. So the sparkler scene, you only get one shot and it's kind of tough because there's a huge exposure change as soon as the sparklers go off. I have my ISO at 128,000 when we're doing the dancing and I bumped it all the way down to like 3,200 for the sparklers, maybe even lower, I think it was 1,600. Yes, yeah, so I think I bumped it all the way down to 1,600 for the sparklers, shooting at 4K, 60 frames per second, 60th of a shutter speed and my white balance all the way down to 2800 Kelvin to match uh, the light of those sparklers. So you only get one shot of that, so you gotta make sure your settings are good. I've had times in the past where I was too dark or I was too bright, and it still works. You can correct in post, but it's best to get that exposure as good as you can the first time. So that's it, that's a wrap. Weddings aren't my favorite, but it's kind of fun. Um, like I said, creatively in the editing room is my favorite when you have a bunch of awesome footage to work with, so. We just knocked this thing out. I probably shot four, 500 gigs of footage. So we spanked it today. If you guys have any further questions about filming weddings or anything, please let me know. Content.